Hello everyone, welcome to Teach Tech. This is the second tutorial video of the Comnet series. In this tutorial, we will be looking at more complex concepts inside the Comnet. We will use the same example that we have done earlier in the tutorial one, but with the higher internal configurations. So let's get started. The objectives for today's tutorial is to introduce the steps required to build a simple LAN model of a LAN and familiarize with running a simulation. But in this lab, we will look at many more internal configurations for scheduling, for receiving and reports. We will understand the reports and statistics that may be obtained from running a network simulation. So today we will be looking at different varieties of reports and the meaning of them. The scenario for today's lab is a small inquiry office there are four PCs for each employees and one file server to keep all shared files. The file server and the PCs are linked with the IEEE 802.3 CSMA CD 100 BST Ethernet network. That means the CSMA CD link that we will use to connect the four PCs and one file server, it will be of this configuration. Simply this means that the bandwidth of that link is 100 MB per second. Employees will generate the traffic due to request for files to the file server. So employees will create file request to file server. The file request can be described by an exponential distribution with a mean of 900 seconds. This means that there will be time gap between one file request to another file request. Those time gap will be maintained in such a way that the mean of those time gaps will be 900 seconds. The size of the file request varies in accordance with a uniform distribution that ranges from 10 to 20 bytes in length. This means that the size of file request that will be created by PCs will be the size from 10 to 20 bytes. All file requests are sent exclusively to the file server located on the LAN. Upon receipt of a file request, the file server will read the file and transmit it to the computer that made the request. In this process, there is little delay. The size of the files that will be transferred can be described by a normal distribution which has a mean of 1 lakh bytes and a standard deviation of 25,000 bytes. This means that the response of the file request that will be made by file server will be of different size. Those different size uh, file response from file server will be of mean of 1 lakh bytes and standard deviation 25,000 bytes. Here standard deviation of 25,000 bytes means that the file response size can scatter up to 25,000 bytes from 1 lakh bytes but not more than that. Standard deviation is just a number which is used to tell how measurements for a group are spread out from the average mean. Here if you notice that we are talking about distributions. So distributions or probability distribution we can call it. It is a function that, that generates random numbers. There are a lot of types of distributions like normal distribution, random distribution. All of these different types of distributions has its own parameter. At the final note, all of these message source that is defined to use TCP IP protocol and they have been estimated at having a packetizing delay of 0.01 millisecond. The packetizing delay refers to the time that it takes our system to create and fill packets of data for sending over TCP IP. Now let's go on to the steps of building the model. The first is creating the network topology. We are supposed to have already started Comnet GUI and these are the steps that we will follow now to do this lab. The first step is to create a collision link or Ethernet link object in the work area. So go to this CSMHTD link and put it right here. Edit the field of the link properties and set the fields value to the following list. So we have to give the name Ethernet. We need to give the type CSMACD and the parameter as this. So go to this link and double click it. 
give the name ethernet the type is already csmacd so no need to change it but we have to change the parameter because the uh, instruction is saying that the parameter should be 802.3 csmacd 100 base t but it is displaying the message of default so if we click the drop down there is no any options of that so for that we have to add it from this button so click on this button and on this side you have library selection where you can select varieties of different configurations so the instruction is saying us about this 802.3 csma cd 100 base t network so let me select it copy this and click on done so you can see that the parameters is now changed so this ethernet link is now able to carry the bandwidth up to 100 mb per second click on ok now let's go to step number three create five processing nodes let me go to this processing node and uh, put it right here right click create clone uh, let me add four clones and now let me add their position so this will be the position and now we need to edit the names of them so the name should be file server pc1234 so this will be our file server So these are the five processing nodes that we have added. Attach each node to the link Ethernet. So for attaching, let us use the diagonal arc for Ethernet file server. The processing nodes are connected to the Ethernet. Now we need to create the file request message source. The file request message source is used to model request to the file server to download files. For that, go to step number 6, create a message source and attach it to the PC1 node. So I'm going to create a message source and I'm going to put it right here. Let's connect it with the PC1. Edit the message source such that the fields of the message source and the values to the following list. So I'm going to double click this message source. Go to this name section. Give the name file req that means it's a file request message so now in scheduling for schedule by iteration time in case of inter arrival we need to select exponential distribution so if you go and click on this drop down you can see various kind of distributions available if the question is saying or if the instruction is saying to select the exponential distribution you need to find the option with exp written so if i go right here you can see this exp option and now it's saying to add mean of 900 seconds and a stream value of 0 so I'm going to click on this button and set the value mean with 900 seconds and the stream value is 0 why 900 second is kept I have already explained in the earlier uh, minute but the stream value I want to explain it now the stream values can be set from 0 to 99. Stream values are used to start used as a starting value for the random number generation. Each stream has its own starting seed which cause it to produce different random numbers from any other streams. So stream values are used for generating unique random numbers from one distribution to another distribution. But since we are on the same topology Throughout the same topology, throughout this entire project, we are going to use stream value as 0. For mean 900 second, I have already explained the time duration between one file request to another file request. The mean of those time durations will be total in 900 seconds. Let's go further now. Now we need to go to message option. So you can go to this message option. If you see message size calculation is probability distribution so it's already selected so I have also explained about probability distribution in earlier minute but it's written here so I'm going to read it out 
A probability distribution is a function that describes the likelihood of obtaining the possible values that a random variable can assume. So generally, it's a random number generation function which has different types of distribution. In this probability distribution option, which is right here, you have to select uniform distribution with the minimum of 10 bytes and the maximum of 20 bytes. Go to this drop down option and now search for UNI keyword. The, that represents the uniform distribution. So it's right here. Click on uniform distribution. And now click on this button and select the value minimum is 10 bytes and the maximum is 20 bytes stream value will remain 0 by default the unit is on bytes so we need not to change it uh, this value means that whenever we will create a file request the size of file request will be minimum of 10 bytes and the maximum of 20 bytes now go to destination option so this is the destination option and on the destination type select random list so click on this drop down and select a random list now after selecting the random list the edit destination list button is highlighted so we need to create a list containing only the file server node so go to this edit destination list click on add and you can see all the nodes that we have defined but the destination of this file request message will be on only file server so select the file server option and click on ok click on done let's define what this random list is trying to say a random list allows you to select a random nodes which will be assigned an equal probability of being randomly selected as the destination so whatever node we define right here the random list selects that destination itself the list of possible nodes is defined by you by selecting the edit destination list which we just did right now by clicking on this edit destination list and adding file server so now let's move further go to the text option which is written right here it's the text option now we need to define what is the actual message we are going to transmit from file request to file response so in the message text option you can see right here copy message name so i'm going to select copy message name but it's already selected so what does this means this means that the copy message option is the default setting which use the name of the source generating the traffic as the text so in this case the name file request is going itself to be the message that will be transmitted from the PCs to the file servers you can also set your custom message text as well by choosing the other options right here now let's go to the packets option this option helps to define the protocols and different other features in the transport protocol option you have to select TCP IP Microsoft so on this protocol section I'm going to click on this arrow I think there is no any value so click on this button and find for TCP IP Microsoft so this is the TCP IP Microsoft version 1.0 this is the protocol that is a default protocol used all over the world so I'm going to copy this and put it right here now click on done so you get to select protocol as TCP IP Microsoft version 1.0 in the packetize option go to this packetize option and you can simply type 0.01 so this will be the packetize time now what is the packetize meaning the packetizing meaning as 0 0.01 second is packetize delay refers to the time it takes a system to create and fill packets of data for sending over internet protocol so now let's go to priority the priority value is 1 
This means that the priority field is used to specify the order of packets in the input and output buffers of various node. If we set the priority as 1 on all the nodes, they will get equal priorities and placed in the queue in first in first out basis. So now let's go to routing class. Routing class standard which in which routing class lets you to define different routing protocols and set the parameters accordingly. So let's move on now and click on OK. Create three clone of the file request message source and attach the clone to PC2, PC3 and PC4. So I'm going to go to file request and do right click, click on clone and create three clones. Attach it. It is important to clone the message source instead of copy and pasting. Copying a message source will cause the destination information will be lost in the copies made, whereas cloning will keep the destination information safe. Now the configurations for file request is completed. Let's create the file server response source. The response source that will be connected to the file server is used to model the transmission of files across the network if the file request message is received. Now let's go to the step number 9 and create a response source and attach it to the file server node. This is the response source. Attach it to file server and now edit the fields of the response source dialog tabs to the values shown in the following list. So now we need to configure this response source according to this information. The name should be file resp. The scheduling in scheduling in edit received message we need to go to this option and remove this asterisk because it will accept the message from anywhere it likes so I don't want it right now I can remove it click on add and on this received message text click on this drop down and you can see file req that is file request message so click on this file request message and click ok and click done let's move further in message option now we need to calculate the size of message which is going to be responded for the file request message. The file, the message size calculation distribution will be probability distribution and the probability distribution type that we are going to use now is the normal distribution. So go to this drop down and find for NOR key term. Here it is NOR. So I'm going to select this option again and give the mean value of 1 lakh and standard deviation is 25,000. The stream value is 0. Again here it is explained standard deviation of 25,000 bytes means that the file response size can scatter up to 25,000 bytes from 1 lakh bytes but not more than that. Standard deviation is a number which is used to tell how measurements for a group are spread out from average value. So the size of message that will be generated on file request will range from 10 byte to 20 byte and the response will be given from file response side in the, in the mean value of at least 1 lakh bytes randomly. So now let's move further. In the text section, go to text and on the message text option use original message. That means the response will be of file response text. So the uh, message that will be actually sent will be file req and the response will be given as the message file resp. Go to the package section and configure the same setting again. But this time we should not have to go to this button and do the same process again. But we can just go to this protocol option. We have to select TCP IP Microsoft 
So if I go to this protocol drop down menu, you will see that the TCP option has already been now added right here. So select it. In the packetize time, you give the value 0 0.01. In priority, it's 1. Routing class, it's the same. Click on OK. Now let's move further. On this step number 11, we need to verify the model. So for verifying, you can go to simulate option and select verify model. You can see there is no verification errors detected. That means all the configurations made is very correct. If you get any kind of error messages right here, you have to solve it and only you can move further. Let's move forward right here. And on the 12 option, set simulation run parameters. So now we need to configure different types of parameters that is necessary for simulation process. Go to the simulate option and go to run parameters. Here we have to configure warm up length, number of replications, and replication length. So, as given in the instruction, the warm up length is 120 seconds. But what is warm up length? Warm up length specifies the time in the simulation when the application will begin to collect the data. Warm up length 120 second means the simulation will start collecting data after 120 seconds of starting of simulations. So number of replication is set to 1. It is the value which represents the set of the number of replication for the simulation process. Replication length is given as 3600. Replication length is the amount of time in the seconds that a simulation will run. So this is it for parameters for simulation. So I'm going to click on OK. Now we need to define the types of report that we want from this Comnet topology. For that we need to select different types of report as given in the instruction. We have to select the report. So for selecting the report, go to this report option and click on select report. You can see these different kinds of categories where we can see nodes, links, WAN clouds, message plus response source, session source and background packet flows. So these are the categories and inside these categories we can find multiple types of other reports. So in node report category, we have to get received message count for all node report. So for selecting that, go to nodes and double click the node option. You can see various options. So right now we only need received message count report. So go to this received message count and double click it. You can see the different nodes that is listed. So I'm going to make it on and I'm going to click on all. So what this will do this will initiate this report this will make it on and this applies for all the nodes right here so this report will generate statistics of message received by each node that is defined from here so click on ok now on the link report section so we don't need any other report from here we can just minimize it by double clicking on the node option now click on this link report option. Double click the link report option. And we need the report for channel utilization and collision statistics for all link. So go to this channel utilization option. Double click it. Click it on. And you can also select all. This will imply with all the channels that is listed right here. For now we have only one channel that is Ethernet. Click on OK. Channel utilization calculates the channel use percentage of Ethernet network. And also we need now collision stat report. So I'm going to this collision stat option. Double click this collision stat option. And again select on for all. Click OK. The collision stat report will provide a summary of collision statistics which occurred on each link. These links can produce 
only those links that can produce collision statistics will be reported. I will further explain about this collision stat report once we actually generate the report in the Comnet. Let's move further. In the message and response report, so I'm going to minimize this option and directly go to this message and response source. We do not have any report requirement for wine cloud, session source, background packet flows for now. Double click this message plus response source and select the report for message delay option. You can see the message delay option right here. Double click this message delay option and select on and all. Click on OK. This instruction is not asking for message delivered report. So if we want, we can leave it on as it is. Or if we don't want, we can just select it and turn it off. Click on OK. So what is the meaning of message delay report? The message delay report presents the message delay statistics perceived by the sender. Message delay is the time between creating the first packet of the message on the originating node and the time that the originating node is notified that the message has been assembled by the destination. For example, if I am creating a message from PC1, the message delay is the time that is uh, the difference between the first packet of the message of PC1 to the time on which the PC1 is notified from file server that the message has been assembled at file server. If you don't understood it, we will see the explanation again from the actual report. So this is the report requirement. Now we need to click done and now we need to first run the simulation. Go to simulate option and select start simulation. You can also press F4 key for that. So click on start simulation. First you need to save the file. So I'm going to choose the location. Give the name as uh, week 2 tutorial. Save as file type will be S3, C3. Sorry. Click on save. Now you can see the animations taking place right here. The blue dot is the file request message and the, and the red dot is the file response message you get. The simulation has been completed. Now let's go to browse report option. For browsing the report that is generated by the comnet, click on report and select browse report. You can see this stat1.rpt file. .rpt is the extension for report file. Select this stat1 file and open it. Maximize the file. You can see a lot of report that is generated right here. Now let's see the meaning of all these reports and let's try to understand its actual meaning and take some insight from this report. Well, the first report starts from the report of received message count. But before that, let's look at the other information given here. This is the organization who has developed the common tool. This is the version and this is the date and time that is when the report was generated. This is the file name and the first report is of received message count for all the nodes that is available on this simulation and the replication we have only one replication replication is the cycle number of cycle that the simulation is created report has been or the statistics has been started to generate it from the 120th second of simulation and went up to 37 20 seconds we have fixed the time for simulation time as 3600 uh, you can see the replication length for lab was 3600 so the statistics is started to generate it from 128 second that's why it went up to 37 20 seconds so now the first report we have is the report of received message count the received message count report presents a count of received message for each destination node which is listed by the message name 
and you can as you can see we have a receiver column name count column name and the message name column name the receiver column name represents the name of the receiving node which is receiving the messages so all of the uh, nodes we have as file server pc2 pc3 pc1 pc4 every one of it uh, receives the message so the number of message received to each node is this so count represents the number of messages message name is right here the name of the received message this is the message text of the message so we have configured the file name as the message name so the message name is file request now let's go to the next report that is the report of channel utilization the channel utilization reports provides the utilization rate for the links which is used to carry the messages in our lab only one link we have used that is named as ethernet which is our csma cd link and um, it shows the link name of the transmission in the frame delivered the number of frames removed from the output buffer at the sending node on the link and subsequently placed in the input buffer of the receiving node is given right here so the number is 3772 and the next value is the rst slash err that means it stands for frames recent or error it represents the number of retransmitted frames this feature is generally used to model noisy lines because noisy lines might have a very high disturbance uh, because of that uh, many of the frames might get dropped so in that case the frames which were dropped has to be retransmitted so this feature is generally used on noisy lines next is the transmission delay average standard deviation and maximum time so it represents the average standard deviation and maximum delay which was observed for any packet across the link as from the statistics we can see that the maximum delay that was felt by the packet in this ethernet link was 0.32 seconds and the average uh, time was 0.067 millisecond and let's go right here which shows the person utilization so this is the amount of percentage of total bandwidth that was used by this link ethernet we have configured this link to be the bandwidth of 100 megabyte per second so as per that only 0.0052 percentage of that particular bandwidth was used on this simulation so the link utilization is the percentage of the link uses out of its total capacity now let's go to the next report which is the collision statistics report we have a bunch of informations so let's look at all of these informations from two different columns the first thing we need to know is what the collision stat reports provide us the collision stat report provides a summary of collision statistics that occur in each link collision means when the frame transmitted at the same time got collided inside the link so we get this report for that purpose the first is the link name which is called the ethernet the protocol which we are using is the csma cd access protocol the full form of this protocol is carrier sense multiple access collision detection this is the protocol that can detect the collided frame inside the link out of that algorithm which we are using or out of this protocol csmacd all of the statistics is counted the first information we have is the collision episode so the value is 1332 1, that means uh, 1332 times a collision occurred on the link that is when two or more nodes try to transmit inside the same collision window that means at the same time in the same path two or more node tried to uh, try to transmit it the frame that's how and they got collided so the number of collided frames are 2664 if you notice the number is actually the double of the episode because in one episode two frames got collided and uh, the total number of collided frames will be the double of colli collision episode 
the total number of frames involved in the collisions which is 2664 and now after the collision takes place the topology tries to resolve that collision so the stat for number of tries to resolve that collision is given right here the average time take on the average the average number of uh, attempt take on to try uh, to resolve that collision package was this standard deviation this and maximum value is 5 so the average is this value standard deviation is 0 0.81 and maximum observed number of retries attempted is 5 before an initially collided frame was transmitted number of deferrals so if a node attempt to transmit off frame and sees the link busy it defers its transmission until the links becomes idle that this is what the csma cd does so the number of transmission attempt deferred is 618 that means 618 times the link tried to transmit the frame but since the link was busy that transmission got unsuccessful until and unless the link becomes idle so this is the number of deferrals and the stat for deferrals delay uh, including average standard deviation and maximum value in millisecond is given right here so the maximum number of time which consumed for deferral process was 0 0.12 millisecond and uh, on that deferral process the maximum number of frames deferred at once in a queue is 1 so this represents the deferral queue size stats for each frame so the average standard deviation and uh, the, the average standard deviation values are 0 and the maximum value is 1 and the next one is number of multiple collision episode this means the number of times that more than two frames uh, were involved in the collision so we can see the number is 0 that means 0 number of time no one that means no any collision took place where there were more than two frames involved so this is the collision stat we got from the comnet and at the end we have a report of the message plus response message delay this message delay report presents message delay statistics as perceived by the sender so what is the definition of message delay message delay is the time between creating the first packet of the message on the originating node that means on the sending node and the time that the sending node was notified that the message has been assembled at the destination for each sender's node or originating node in the model the report leads delay to its destination here we can see um, the message delay report has been generated for the origin with the message source name and the destination list the first row includes file server file response and echo echo means the number of total messages responded to all of the remaining nodes if you see on the message assembled for each destination the number of messages that have been completely assembled at the destination in this case 21 of the messages were completely assembled at the destination of file server so the time take on for that was the 304 millisecond average time standard deviation time and the maximum time 412 millisecond since the number of messages assembled is greater that's why the time is also greater in this case for pc2 to um, file server pc3 to file server pc1 to file server pc4 to file server these are the numbers of messages assembled and these are the times taken this is how we can see and analyze the report that is generated from the community application i hope you like this video if you have liked this video please hit like button comment down your thoughts and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon so thank you for watching we will see you on the next tutorial videos Thank <laughs> you.